Okay, Rukun's video on Thursday, the 16th of March, 2017. Hope you're doing well. So once in a while, we have these really important days where we kind of get breakout moves on a whole bunch of charts all kind of happening in the same direction. And for me, that was kind of the story after the FOMC announcement on Wednesday. We had a real breakdown in the US dollar and strength in a whole bunch of currencies kind of going the other way, particularly the emerging market kind of currencies and all of uh, those kind of equity markets, the emerging market equities and all of the ETFs associated with them just seemed to take off and kind of break out. So uh, I've been talking about this. Uh, I'm looking back at my uh, kind of diary here about the 11th of February, I started wittering on about emerging market equities and the rollover and strength that we're having. And it's taken from uh, this chart, which is my kind of rotation chart, looks at a whole bunch of uh, different asset classes all in one. You can see they're using uh, ETFs. We can look at, you know, gold versus commodities versus um, high yield uh, bonds. We've got treasury bonds, emerging markets, real estate, and so on. We can look at all of those together and see where do we want to be? Where's the strength kind of going on? I find this particular view of the world, let me turn this one off, uh, disable, this uh, version of the indicator the most useful because you see things kind of move from being top of the class to bottom of the class and then kind of rotating from one to the other. So we had this period, you know, 2014, 2015, where we had real strength in equities, uh, real estate, and then kind of government bonds. Uh, and then we had a period where we had government bonds doing well and gold doing well. And then all of a sudden they kind of fell off pretty dramatically from being you know, top of the class during 2016 to bottom of the class during 2017. And what's taken over uh, has been equities and particularly emerging market equities and commodities. And those have been the laggards and the losers, you know, kind of back in these previous years. You can see here the commodity lines kind of been at the zero line kind of during 2014 and 15 and most of 16. And then we had emerging market equities doing really poorly. They were bottom of the class 2016. And now they've kind of emerged to the top of the class. Commodities have come off a little bit. Uh, this uh, ETF is heavily weighted to, towards crude oil. Uh, and gas and so on. And so that's kind of not all that happy at the moment. So that's why we've had some dipping off here. But the emerging markets has really been strong. Uh, and the uh, move down in the US dollar over the last day or two uh, has been, you know, replicated on the other side by real strength in the emerging market currencies, and all the other other currencies kind of uh, facing off against the US dollar. So let's just look at the US dollar chart kind of here. So uh, US dollar, you know, we had this huge, uh, this is red bars as strength, huge kind of rally 2014, 2015. And then we kind of been batting backwards and forwards. We put in a pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame and then support to resistance and overshot it here on the highest time frame. Uh, during the latter part of last year and the beginning of this year. But we have had exhaustion by bearish divergence come in. And that says that, you know, the, we've had our exhaustion volume. Now we're looking for price to replicate some weakness. And with the activity over uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we had this really pretty nasty bar down on Wednesday, taking us to support and then through support here on this intermediate time frame. So we're still showing some strength and there's a possibility that we'll kind of need to go back up and uh, kind of work off this kind of cyclical energy here. But we're starting to break through supports and so that's not looking all that healthy. And so the run up in the US dollar for the time being just might mean that it's kind of come off for a while and we'll kind of roll the other way. And what we're seeing on the flip side is some strength in currencies like the Euro, British Pound, uh, Aussie Dollar, Ruble, uh, Rand, and so on. So let me just show you a couple of those. Here's British Pound. So again, uh, earlier on in the year, I was talking about 120 being in an absolutely critical level here where they wanted to support it down here. We've played back into the bottom of that range, testing down into the 120 levels, and supports come in and we bounced nicely uh, off that after a flush pattern going on here. System wise, you know, we've not flicked over to strength yet, but we got the makings of this kind of bottoming pattern. Uh, with the British pound starting to find some support there in the low 20s. And part of that whole picture is the strength that we're starting to see in EWU, which is the ETF 
uh, for uh, the UK stock market. So we've had pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame. We've had exhaustion sell, bullish divergence kind of come in here, and we've had strength since the end of last year uh, here at the 30 level, and we're starting to break up uh, kind of nicely into that. So showing all of that strength going on in EWU. So the pound in the UK market, not emerging markets, you know, kind of they're kind of uh, more developed markets, but certainly that's kind of going on there. Same deal with the euro. The eurozone is kind of strong and uh, the euro is starting to strengthen, not traditionally kind of emerging markets, but they're certainly, you know, opposite the US dollar. And so here's our euro chart here with our exhaustion sell bullish divergence. We've just put in a pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. System wise, it's still showing weakness because we've still got white bars kind of going on here. But it's the beginning of something kind of happening there in the euro. And I was saying the other day, I was kind of surprised, you know, with all the troubles that we're seeing uh, in the eurozone that we could have some strength there. But, you know, we could have just run out of sellers uh, for the time being. And so we'll go back and maybe um, get a short covering rally. And that'll be the juice that'll take us down to the next, the next leg down in the euro. But for the time being... You know, the chart is starting to say we've got some support kind of showing up there. You can look at uh, EZU, which is an ETF that kind of looks at the uh, Eurozone for equities and that showing strength. The one that's been on my radar screen over the last couple of months because of the dividend yield was so strong uh, kind of back here last year is EWP, which is actually the Spanish uh, stock market. So it's priced in euros and the euro is going up and the Spanish stock market's going up. And so this thing's taken off. So another pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame here. We had our exhaustion sell uh, on a left shoulder and bullish divergence comes in and a flush pattern. We kind of uh, start to break out. These are kind of showing short covering rallies and kind of break out volume, getting the move going. And then since the beginning of the year here, all these blue um, red bars just showing strength and the market starting to take off. And then finally, bang, last couple of days, that's what the Spanish market, the uh, Spanish ETF is kind of doing there. So those are kind of more traditional markets. If you're looking at more the emerging markets, uh, they're doing well. Here's EEM, which is the... Uh, symbol for the emerging markets here. And again, same deal, exhaustion, sell, bullish divergence kind of comes in. Uh, we had pullback, didn't go to end of trend, and just since mid last year, showing a whole bunch of strength as we break out with all these red bars kind of going on here. And yeah, we've got supports, we're breaking resistances on the lowest time frames, and this thing's just kind of taking off to the upside. Uh, volume wise that was uh, the exhaustion volume getting this move going and now we've got another leg kind of setting us off kind of going to the upside so at, inside EEM there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, including things like RSX which I'm in uh, which is the Russian market we've got MCHI which is uh, the Chinese market which I'm also in as well South African market as well and you can see the currencies and the equities markets and all of those uh, kind of market starting to take off. So uh, Russian ruble, uh, this is it. Russian ruble, unfortunately, on trade station, the only way to look at this directly, kind of, uh, you can look at it on the cash uh, forex charts, looking at the US dollar versus the Russian ruble, but I like flipping it upside down and looking at the futures markets. So RU, looking at the latest, the June contract 2017, you can start to see the strength that we had. We've gone from 14 to almost 19 uh, in the Russian ruble, you know, in the last six months or so. So real strength there. RA, and then again, the June contract M17 here. This is the South African Rand. Uh, going from 66 to 77, again in the same kind of time period, as well you can see the strength going on in those currencies. We've got a similar stories in all of those kind of uh, currencies and emerging markets and so on. So it's no wonder the dollar index is starting to weaken uh, and all these emerging currencies are going on and all the emerging market equity ETFs are strengthening as well. So I've just put on MCHI here. Uh, which is the Chinese uh, ETF. You know, back in 2015, we had this real blow-off move, exhaustion by bearish divergence kind of came in, some pullback to end of trends, and then it quickly sank away. And now we didn't have exhaustion sell on the downside. It was a pretty uh, severe, you know, reading that we had in volume, but it wasn't a strict kind of exhaustion sell pattern down here. This exhaustion buy that we're seeing at the moment, that's for me is takeoff volume kind of breaking us through these resistances and getting us going 
up into this zone so that's why I'm kind of keen on MCHI it's one of the biggest components of that EEM uh, kind of contract. It's been beat down. Chinese market's been beat down. We've now had some strength and kind of uh, rattled the cages here in terms of playing resistance, support, resistance. And I think we're breaking out to the next move. So 50 up and out and see where it goes. Uh, obviously 65 is a long way away, uh, but it's something that's kind of in the shadow uh, that we're kind of going to have to to deal with going forwards, but there's a whole bunch in these uh, kind of emerging markets of really interesting uh, ETFs that kind of make up this whole play. So this is uh, EWY. If I just put on yeah, EWY, which is Korea again. 2016, we kind of bottomed out. Uh, broke into an uptrend and we're doing it again we're breaking out into uptrends kind of going on here so EWY is kind of looking interesting you can see here's kind of the panic volume blue professional down bars at the bottom and again uh, here at this low and then they pick it up again here and again on this down move here and now we're kind of breaking out to the upside so EWY is kind of interesting uh, what else have I got EZU which, uh, okay, that's the Eurozone, uh, that's the whole uh, of the Eurozone uh, kind of currencies, and again, breaking out into an uptrend here. This exhaustion buy pattern with this exhaustion buy is getting us going, it's breaking us out of this channel, you know, 32 to 36 that we've been in for so long. You can see all these blue professional bars down here at the lows, picking it up at the lows here and here and here, there. And now we're starting to break out above resistances on all three time frames, getting this thing going into a serious kind of uptrend. So that's EZU. Um, INDA, INDA was mentioned, I think it was Jeff Gunlanch mentioned that the other day. Uh, this is India. Uh, not a lot of, um, oh, I beg your pardon, I thought there was not a lot of back history, but there is quite a lot of back history. But again, exhaustion, sell, bullish divergence kind of comes in. All these end of trends, look at this. We got, you know, a uh, pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame, on the intermediate time frame here, and the highest time frame, bang, bang, bang. And then we break into an uptrend, bang, we're just away, you know, into this move kind of down here at 27s was good buying. We're taking off to 31s and We'll be looking at 33s kind of soonish until we see that exhaustion uh, kind of volume to see where that go that goes. And again, we're breaking out on all three t uh, these time frames and so on. So INDA is just one after another with all these emerging markets. One's uh, EWZ, uh, Brazil. Brazil has been really strong kind of uh, for the last year. Uh, and the percentage moves down here from the exhaustion cell um, flush patterns down here has been huge uh, for the Brazilian markets. A little bit of weakness over the last couple of days, but then we're breaking back out above uh, uh, after some fairly serious profit taking going on here. But this is the exhaustion buy, getting the move going, bang, uh, and then this is pretty severe profit taking going on here, and then they just uh, picked it up over the last couple of days and got this thing going. Let me see if I can find, uh, Turkey was another one, which, you know, the news out of uh, Turkey and Erdogan is nothing but bad. I mean, he's he just looks like a, uh, a nightmare dictator kind of going on and, you know, the uh, problems that he's causing in Europe and uh, all the um, diplomatic kind of shenanigans kind of going on there. You'd have thought you'd stay away from Turkey uh, with a barge pole. But in terms of the equities uh, market, it seems like we've kind of bottomed out to some extent. There's a blue professional down bar. I mean, all the momentum patterns are all messed up uh, here. Not particularly helpful, uh, I'd say. Uh, it's a thinly traded kind of ETF, and so that's why better momentum is struggling a little, little bit here. But uh, yeah, we've you know we've started to break out above uh, resistances, pullback supports holding, going to strike out above uh, resistance most likely here. So. Even an unlikely uh, you know, candidate like Turkey here looks like at the beginning of this year was kind of good buying. But I think this whole group of emerging market equity ETFs is, is really interesting and it's just a question of finding one or two that uh, you kind of feel comfortable with where the currency is, is going the right way, the ETFs kind of going the right way. 
you know, whether equities will continue to strengthen in the U.S., I don't know. You know, there might be a little bit of profit taking and sell off in our near future. Not sure. But, you know, the general market, the general public is just not in this equities uh, play, not like they were in, you know, 2000 into the tech wreck and so on. And so and everybody's so bearish against the equities market. All we're doing is just busting stops every time, busting stops, and all the traditional valuation models are, are not working. And yeah, you know, we could be going into just kind of one of these blow-off moves. My personal view is that the emerging market is is a place where we'll see more equity strength than the U.S. market. I think the percentage moves are going to be bigger in the equities markets, and that's why I'm in China and Russia, uh, because I think they're they're kind of more interesting. But you know, for the time being, the uh, the equity space is pretty strong. Going back to this, you know, there's that's U.S. equities. This is emerging market equities, and so that whole space, for the time being at least, is is pretty go uh, good. So, kind of just going with the momentum play. But anyway, take a look at all of those uh, ETFs. Uh, I might list a few more uh, in the description uh, below uh, this uh, video. Let me just pull up one last one. I think this is South Africa, yeah, EZA. So we got the RAND that we, we know is kind of strengthening. Again, having the news being horrible last year uh, for the South Africans, um, but now it looks like, you know, beginning of 2016, we had our exhaustion sell bullish divergence. All of these blue, uh, end of trend patterns kind of come together here. We start to take off exhaustion by getting the move going here with this exhaustion buy and then we've been uh, testing the ranges kind of we had an initial resistance come in here and support and we're busting back out uh, through this thing so blue professional down bars uh, catching buying the lows we've found support and we're now breaking out into more strength uh, on the South African market and above a previous kind of pivot high at 60 uh, once we get through that you know we'll be looking at the next kind of level up so you know South African market but again I'll, I'll list a whole bunch of these ETFs that you can look at on your charts and see what you think uh, but for me that emerging market equity space is really interesting and that for me was the story that came out of Wednesday's FOMC activity and all the market activity dollar index took a beating and all the emerging market uh, currencies kind of started to take off we've had strength in those uh, equity markets uh, for the last six months or so at least in some of them and now we have the currency and the equities market kind of going both in the same direction which means the ETFs uh, that are priced in those currencies um, looking at those kind of uh, overseas equity markets uh, we got the two things kind of going moving together so um, I expect some kind of good moves in those uh, ETFs. Anyway, so there we go. Hope your trading is going well. Hope you found that video interesting.